Welcome to this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Something we've heard about for quite some time, this issue of opioids. It's ripping through our country, taking the lives of victims, young and old, all colors, all sexes. But in Maryland, the situation is even more dire. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, in 2017 alone, nearly 2,000 people died in the state of Maryland. It's a rate that's twice as much as the national average. Clearly, it's an issue that needs critical attention. But because no one seems to have one good idea on how to stop this epidemic, there are many differing opinions on how to deal with it. Baltimore's state attorney, for example, Marilyn Mosby, has come out in favor of safe injection sites. Mosby signed a brief looking to open a safe house, which would open the first safe injection site in the city of Baltimore. As you can imagine, that proposal is sparking lots of debate on both sides. Chris Shea, president of the Life Coach for Life Journey, uh, Life Coaching, joins me right now. You're opposed to this idea. I am definitely opposed to this idea. And why, why is that? We need to do something about the crisis, no doubt about that. But the big issue with this is we're avoiding the main topic of solution. The main topic of solution is treatment on demand. Right. How do we get people the treatment that they need when they need that treatment? We've had an awful lot of people come here on the set of Off Script to talk about this. These, these are moms and dads who have lost young people, young adults, former high school football star, mm -hmm. the college student. Uh, some moms have gotten addicted, you know, af after being prescribed painkillers. Yeah. And, and, and they've taken to the streets in some cases, okay? How bad is it out there? And what would your solution be? Other than treatment on demand, because that, 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 that's a long, long haul, right? That's not gonna happen instantly. Is there the political will for that? Other than treatment on demand, is, is there another way, a halfway point? That really is the point. Because when you're saying there isn't the political will for it, there really isn't. But why is it the political will to allowing people a safe place to continue doing what they're doing? Keep in mind, you're going to walk into these safe places. You're going to be safe in that place while you're injecting yeah, your But drug. you got to come out. You have to come out, and you don't use just once a day. So you're going to need to use elsewhere throughout the day. We're perpetuating the problem, not solving the problem. Treatment on demand, what would it cost? So treatment on demand... Because people who don't have the problem in their family, in their face, that's the first thing they want to know. What's it going to cost? Well, it's not going to cost that much more than what it's going to cost us to run these safe places. Okay. Because the safe places, as structured, are going to bring in medical personnel to make sure that you're safe. Mm -hmm. So why don't we take that money and put it into outpatient, intensive outpatient, where people would be safe? I I've heard from people in Maryland who have driven family members out of state to get this kind of treatment that you oh, talked yeah, about. Oh, yeah, they places. need to. Think about any other medical illness. If you went to a hospital, a clinic, your doctor, whatever, you're gonna get treatment just because you show up. If you show up with an addiction, you're gonna wait yeah. or have to go out of state. And because everybody out there now has, and I'm talking about first responders, they, they have Narcan, it's in some uh, homes and people know how to use it, which means you can bring people practically back from the dead. Exactly. That's just treating the symptom, right? Again, that's, that's a wonderful thing. And harm reduction, which falls under that of, of saying, how do we help people? Yes, that's wonderful, that's like CPR. So you definitely want to help somebody, but then get them back to the hospital. The problem is once the hospital gets them medically, you know, safe and all, they're going to put them right back out in the street. I got you. So again, we're back into the same situation. This is good stuff. Let's continue this conversation. It means a lot to us. Chris Shea, thanks a lot for joining us.